Hello guys, this is Dr. Mobin. We are talking renal system. We are discussing renal system topics. Today's topic, renal system. Today's topic is one of the most important topics in the uh, in the renal system, and not only just the renal system, but actually the whole physiolo physiological and pathological mechanisms around the diseases. This is one of the core mechanisms which must be understood. So that mechanism is glomerular filtration rate and really glomerular filtration. So first we'll discuss what is glomerular filtration. Then we'll discuss what are various factors which affect the filtration. Then we'll talk about what glomerular filtration rate means. And then, and then we'll do a little tabular structure to figure out in various conditions what happens to the GFR and finally I would connect the dots. Th that would be the most important thing that I will be providing a complete integrated view of various physiological and pathological mechanisms which change the GFR. So that will be very important. What I did was I went through lots of physiology books, pharmacology books and the pathology books, medicine books and collected various diseases and various physiological mechanisms which have an impact on GFR or GFR has an impact on them and put them together in one area. So that would be a useful thing to look at. So starting um, from the GFR, the diagram which I'll make is this way. So let's say this is aorta. Aorta has renal artery of course, there are two renal arteries. For our purpose, we'll use one of these renal artery. And again, this is a simplified schematic diagram. It is not an anatomical diagram. So this is really to understand what is happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a unit, functional unit of the kidney, which is a nephron and a glomerulus attached to it. And we'll talk about that. So here, right from here, I will make a efferent arteriole, efferent arteriole which I hope you know becomes divided into glomerular capillaries. So glomerular capillaries, glomerular, I'll just write it here, hope you know the spellings, glomerular capillaries. Then efferent arterioles, efferent arteriole and I remember efferent arteriole A for efferent and A for arriving. So efferent ar arteriole is the one where blood arrives to the kidney and efferent arteriole is where the blood is now going towards a second set of peritubular capillaries. But before I made the peritubular capillaries, I want to make the nephron. So here is the Bowman's space. Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, proximal convoluted tubule, Bowman's, Bowman's capsule. Then let's say this is loop of Henle. Then there is, I would make distal. distal convoluted tubule which then goes and opens up in collecting duct. Collecting duct finally forms the urine. This urine from here, this urine will go into the minor calluses, major calluses, renal pelvis, ureter, bladder, urethra and outside the body. So this system here, the nephron is actually going to throw the um, the urine outside the body. So nephron, you can actually say this is a space connected to outside the body. Now coming back here, continuing with our, so we have peritubular capillaries, make a little bit of a peritubular capillaries. So the efferent arteriole, efferent arteriole divides again into capillaries which are around the tubule, the nephron. So that is why these are called peritubular capillaries. I'll make them here like this. 
and finally these peritubular capillaries will become venous these will become venous and then finally renal vein and renal vein will open up in the inferior vena cava. So, inferior vena cava, renal vein and that is how this would work. Let's make it this way. Cool. So, peritubular capillaries, these are capillaries more than one blood vessels simplified. So, the blood arrives the blood arrives in the heart, how much blood comes in to the kidneys in the heart, normal physiological cardiac output is about 5 liters, out of that 5 liters cardiac output per minute, the renal artery usually gets 20 percent of that blood flow. So, 20 percent of the 5 liter is going to be about 1 liter. So, 1 liter, 1 liter of the blood, 20 percent of blood flow goes to the kidney. So, 1, 1 liter per minute and this is for both kidneys. I have made one kidney over here or actually I just have made one functional unit of the kidney, but this is for both the kidneys, five, 1 liter of blood going into the kidney. Now, I hope you, you know that blood is divided into two primary parts. One are the blood cells and the other one are blood plasma. So, plasma usually is 60 percent of the blood volume. So, if 1 liter is coming in, 60 percent of 1 liter is what 1000 milliliter, 60 percent would mean 600 milliliter. So, from for 1 liter blood per minute will mean 600 milliliter plasma per minute to the kidney. And what is hematocrit? Hematocrit is the blood cells, right? Hematocrit would be of course the remaining 40 percent which will mean 400 milliliter per minute. So, do not forget this, keep this in your mind when you are doing glomerular filtration rate that the 5 liter blood came out, 20 percent of the blood went into the kidney that is about 1 liter per minute. Out of that 1 liter per minute, the plasma is about 600 milliliter per minute which is passing through the glomeruli or from the kidney and about 40 percent is, is the blood cells. Blood cells have no role in this whole discussion. So, we would only discuss them right now that these are 40 percent and these would just come in and go back from the capillaries and back into the venous system done. Now, let us talk about the plasma 60, 600 milliliter of the plasma. That plasma 600 milliliter enters the afferent arterioles. Afferent arterioles are arterioles that means they have smooth muscle va valves, so smooth muscles in their va wall and these smooth muscles can contract and they can change the diameter of the arteriole. From the afferent arteriole the blood passes through the glomerulus. Glomerulus itself is nothing but the capillary meshwork here. This capillary meshwork is actually if you think about it the meshwork is sitting like this that inside the meshwork is mesangium or let me say this is mesangium. Mesangium is nothing but mesangial cells or connective tissue cells which are sitting like a little ball. Around that ball are sitting the glomerular capillaries that is these capillaries. So, they are wrapped around the ball. So, think about a ball on which you have wrapped some ropes. So, these ropes are the capillaries and inside the ball is the mesangium, mesangial cells. Now, the ball is then now cover that ball with a cloth, with a piece of cloth. That piece of cloth is the Bowman space or the Bowman's capsule. So, this is what is happening here. This is a three dimensional structure, spherical dimension. Here, I am just making it flat. So, so, the glomerulus are capillaries and you know one thing which is very important in the glomerular operators to know is that we have glomerular basement membrane over here. I have a separate lecture which I had given with a shaky camera and a, with a pencil and a paper. It is in the renal system on the YouTube, check that out. Important thing is what is the structure of the basement membrane? I have detailed, I have given a detailed review of the me membrane. Here a summary that we have endothelial cells of course, these, these are capillaries. So, these would have endothelial cell, 